Good afternoon, folks. Slightly slanted it's Luke coming at you from Oakdale, Minnesota. This image is in a supposed image from... I think this image, particular one, came from Matt Rogers' channel. But this is supposed to be the Nibiru system, or the Nemesis system, okay? But I'm making this video today because i got a couple perspectives I need to share with you. Okay, folks, and here we are. We're in my Redshift app, and we're in the Trapezium Open Star Cluster. Now, I just showed you what the Nemesis system looks like. Here's the Trapezium. Okay, and in 2012, NASA announced there being a presence of a black hole. And a black hole is nothing more than a collapsed star. And notice... At the top of the cross here, it's a binary. And notice, zero ones, zero one, zero one, zero one. Okay, this information is gonna be relevant in a minute here. So the two things look exactly the same. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom you out so you guys can witness it. I'm zooming out from the trapezium, which is in the middle of, this is the Orion's Nebula. This is Orion's Nebula right here, which is the only begotten sun in my opinion, but the eye in the triangle is right here, folks. Sorry. right here safe all the tech Rigel pyramid Orion nebula that's the eye this angle here is the same as the Great Pyramids of Giza. Okay, now we're going to zoom out of that a little bit. Look at this. The Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci spiral. Starting. Right at Orion's Nebula. And look at that. We're looking out. Okay, we're in the center of the earth. Look at. Enough to make you dip. Okay, go back to this photo just to reiterate, looks the same, don't it? And I just had to show this one because this is cool. Caught that with my drone. Oh, and here's Mounds Park again. And somebody stated in a previous video that they saw four mounds. Yes, you did see four mounds because here's the fourth one. This, this one right... Oops. This one right here. And this was done after these ones. And these are in the layout of Orion's belt. A 2012 paper suggests an intermediate black hole with a mass of 100 times greater than, or times larger than our sun is present within the trapezium, something that could explain the large velocity dispersion of the star cluster. Trapezium again, cross in a circle. Going over what 
I just said. Okay, here's the eye in the hand of the Hopi, or yeah, of the Hopi and the Mississippi River Mound Builders and the Mayans. But the Mayans had a different to fire in the hearth. There's the turtle with the swastika. Eye in the hand. Have you ever wondered why we use the word hell, hello to greet each other? After all, the word can be reduced to hell, the fiery place of eternal punishment. And the suffix o, which means associated with, in Greek mythology, helios, which means sun, was the god of the sun. Is it just a coincidence that you have a soul? That our sun is called soul? If so, why do we call those who die in a battle soldiers, a soul die or soul dyers? Is that why we say good morning when the sun rises? Because it is good to see the sun because it gives us life. But we are mourning those who sacrifice their souls to make it possible. Why do we call our male offspring sons? You are called a person. Is it because you pertain to the sun? Words are defined in a dictionary. Dick, shun, airy. Two of the three syllables are negative sounds and therefore is a derogatory, a derogative slang term. Synonyms and antonyms are listed in a thesaurus. The fo from the Greek theos is the root of theology, the study of God. And saurus means lizard. A thesaurus literally means lizard god. How many names for government entities start with a negative prefix? The word nation is nation. The un United Nations. NATO, NASA, NORAD, NASCAR, UNESCO, and I'm sure you can come up with uh, with others. How are you being programmed through our language to go to the sun or hell? Helios. Helios. See, I don't believe with that. I don't believe that. The sun in English, as well as other languages such as Latin, is called soul. We are all said to be souls or to have a soul. Soul. We have a solar plexus and feet have souls. Soul is the sun in Italian. You are called a person pertaining to the sun. When a male child is born, we call them sons. The word for son is S-O-N-N-E in German. Hugh was part of 12 gods in the e Egyptian stellar cult, which could explain why we are human. Colors and hues originate from light of the sun. Politicians encourage soldiers, soul dyers. Yes, I already said that. Pronouncing the words has pronounced effect. The science of semantics shows how all spoken sounds taken on a vibratory geometry or shape like how you can blow smoke rings by forming your mouth into a shape of an O. The Tibetan monks show how sound can be used to form geometric patterns in a plate of sand particles. So the spoken word can indeed create reality. Also consider the mind's ability to combine words and sounds. When someone sneezes, you feel customarily obligated to say, bless you. But if you sound out the syllables, does your subconscious mind also make the connection to the phrase, be less you? So the very act of blessing someone can also be subconsciously telling them to be less. This is spellcasting. Also consider the mind's ability to combine words and sounds. Yep. I already did that one. Words mean thing, multi multiple meanings. And this is where I got the the sword, the sword, and the words. Words are sword.
You see, read this. According to research at Cambridge University, it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. The rest can be a total m mess, and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole. The eye in the hand. An uh, information system that's digital, and we have us, the players, as pieces of that consciousness, right? That are uh, part of digital consciousness, and we have our bodies and our universe and our world as a virtual reality. Okay, now the question is, well, why? You know, what is this about? Well, given that our reality is really information-based, and that information is really the only thing that's real. If you didn't have your five senses, what would you be? You'd be a point of consciousness floating in a black void. That's all you'd be. The day car moment, right? I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think. You see, I exist, therefore I'm conscious. So that's all you'd have, nothing more than that. So our world, our reality is created from data from information. So this information system, like all information systems, has to evolve and grow by lowering its entropy. Now, entropy is a physics word. It's just simply a measure of disorder. High entropy, lots of disorder. Low entropy, little disorder. Okay. Now, an information system is made up of bits. A bit is just a, a name for the smallest unit of information. Now, in our computer processes, that's a one and a zero. Okay, we call it a binary bit. But bits don't have to be binary. That's just probably the bottom level of the way you can do things. So we can think of it now just as ones and zeros. That's a bit. Well, if you have a system of information and all those bits, every bit it has is random, then there is no information, right? Random bits don't contain any information. They don't mean anything because they're random. That's the definition of random. So how does an information system evolve? How does it exist? It exists by creating order out of disorder, by creating content. Content and meaning is just order and structure. Okay. Any, any kind of order produces information, even just simple little orders. And here's a, uh, a little example. Up, down, up, down, up, down. What's next? Up. How'd you know that? Because the pattern carries information. See? It's a structure. It carries information. So information systems evolve by decreasing the entropy of the system, creating order. In an information system, that means creating information, constructing, building. And that information needs to be valuable, needs to mean something, needs to be useful. Just a bunch of random structures are a little lower entropy, but it doesn't evolve you very much. So you have to have meaningful structures, content, significance. That's what a system wants to create. So here's an information system, and if it can evolve itself, it's getting more and more order, more and more information. As it de-evolves, it's getting less. It's getting more randomness, less information. So if this information system is conscious, it's a matter of life or death. 
If the information system becomes totally random, then it dies. It doesn't have any information anymore. So it wants to continue on building. It's aware. It's consciousness. Okay, so I'm starting now with an assumption. The assumption is consciousness exists. Simple assumption. Not a real wild one because we all think you know, we're conscious. By creating patterns, by creating patterns of patterns, and it got kind of bogged down after a while. You've got all the kind of patterns you could think about it and, it, and patterns of the patterns of the patterns, and it came up with a new technology. And the new technology was called time. Now, it had always had time in a kind of a primordial sense because you can't have you can't have order out of time without the time because it was before the order and after the order. You know, you order, you change something. There's always a before and after, which requires time. So there's always some sort of time there. That's another assumption. Okay. Now, what it did is simply took two of those bits, a one and a zero, and just alternated them. One, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and it just built a metronome. That's a clock. So now it had a clock. So with clock, that's the new technology. Now it can have sequences of patterns, of sequences of patterns. Now you got a whole new dimension in which it could create and produce order, because it could produce both order you know, in time as well as the order it was producing. So the next, it also worked that out until that kind of got stalled. You know, like all of these inventions, you know, it kind of creates new things you can do, more order, more ways that you can organize things. Okay, so, but eventually you kind of work out that, and it needed to do something else to help it continue to evolve. And like other systems that we know of, it did, this, it did the exact same thing that, that uh, other systems do when they run into the same problem. What it did is it created pieces of itself that it could interact with because it was a monolithic thing trying to evolve. It had only a certain limited number of possibilities to do, uh, do evolve into, certain ways that it could organize. But if it had another thing like itself that also had free will, and I just introduced for God created his only begotten Son, for he who shall believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Free will. Okay. Then, who knows what would happen out of that? Now you've got two things that are independent, that can interact with each other. A whole bunch of new possibilities arise. Well, if it's that way with two, what about if there were a million and they were all interacting with, uh, with each other? Wow, think of all the possibilities you could have with all of that interaction. How many? That's how, that's how we could exist in a finite boundary with an infinite set of outcomes. That's what he's alluding to, I believe, because of no matter how big you think our system is, it is a finite system meaning our Orion system, or our human system, or our soul system, our trapezium system, our solar system. Solar means our soul system, our solar system, our soul system. Ways could that go together? What are the combinations and permutations of possibilities among millions of things with free will? It's pretty much unlimited. You see? So now it had room to evolve into. And we are one of those individual units of consciousness, one of those pieces. And we have free will. So free will, consciousness, time, all go together. They're all logically necessary for each other. You see, you, consciousness does what? It has awareness, but it makes choices. That's what consciousness does. It makes choices. Well, if you make a choice, you have to have time because it's before you made the choice and after you made the choice, so time's necessary. And you need free will because otherwise there is no choice. Free will says that there is a choice. Uh, determinism says there is no choice. So 
consciousness, free will, and time all kind of go together as a, as a group of things that are necessarily logical for each other to exist. And down on the other side of that, in the opposite corner, is, is where most science is today, and that is, uh, there is no time. Time is an illusion. There is no consciousness. There is no free will. You have determinism instead of free will. And if you are a materialist, you have to be in that camp. Materialism cannot exist as a concept without determinism. It also comes to the conclusion that there is no time. Time has to be an illusion, and there is no free will. There is no choice. Everything's a big machine. Materialism has it, our reality. It's just this big machine. If you knew where all the piece parts were, and you knew what state they were all in, you know, their velocity, their size, you know, all the things about all the parts, then you could calculate everything that would ever happen from there on, because it's just this machine that obeys the rules. You can't have free will. Nobody's making any choices. Everything happens because it's just the way the machine works. So, you see, determinism means that you have to have determinism if you have a machine. And time becomes a problem in a machine as well. And that gets more into, into uh, relativity theory, but time does become a problem in this machine. Because everything that's possible to happen needs to happen. And I guess that turns into many worlds theory, which we'll maybe get into later if you want to talk about it. So we have these two opposite ends, the free will, the consciousness, and the time, no time, no free will, no consciousness. Okay, so scientists would tell you that there's only the illusion of consciousness. Now I go to the Emerald Tablets, Tablet 5, Key of Time. List ye, O man, take of my wisdom. Learn of the deep hidden mysteries of space. Learn of the thought that grew in the abyss bringing order and harmony in space. Know ye, O man, that all that exists has only because has o being only because of the law. Know ye the law, and ye shall be free, never be bound by the fetters of night. Far through space, strange spaces have I journeyed, into the depths of the abyss of time, learning strange and yet stranger mysteries, until in the end all was revealed. Know ye that mystery is only mystery, when it is knowledge unknown to man, when ye have plumbed the heart of all mystery, knowledge and wisdom will surely be thine. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret, whereby ye may be free from this space. Long have I thought, 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 sought wisdom I, and shall seek to eternity's end. For no I that ever before me receding shall move the goal. I seek to attain. Even the lords of the cycles know that not yet they reach the goal. For with all of their wisdom, they know that truth ever grows. Once in a past time I spoke to the dweller, asked of the mystery of time and of space, asked him the question that surged in my being, saying, O Master, what is time? Then to me spoke he, the Master, know ye, O Thoth, in the beginning there was a void and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless nothingness. And into that nothingness came a thought, purposeful, all-pervading, and it filled the void. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex, or vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. That's the Anu. And I questioned the Master, saying, Was this thought eternal? And answered me the Dweller, saying, In the beginning there was eternal thought. And for that to thought to be eternal, time must exist. So into the all-pervading thought grew the law of time. I, time which exists through all space, flowing in a smooth rhythmic movement that is eternal in a, eternally in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time. For time is the force that holds events separate, each in its proper place. Time is not in motion, but ye move through time, as your consciousness moves from one event to another, I, by time ye exist, 
all in all an eternal one existence. Know ye that even though in time ye are separate, yet still are ye one with all time existent. Cease then the voice of the dweller, and departed I to ponder on time. For knew I that in these words lay wisdom and a way to explore the mysteries of time. Oft did I ponder the words of the dweller, then sought I to solve the mystery of time. Found I that time moves f through strange angles. Yet only by curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to the time space. Moved I, th found I th that only by moving upward and yet again by moving rightward could I be free from the time of this movement. Forth I came from out of my body, moved in the movements that changed me in time. Strange were the sights I saw in my journeys, many of the mysteries that opened to view. I saw, I saw I'm man's beginning, learn from the past that nothing is new. Seek ye, O man, to learn the pathway that leads through the spaces that are formed forth in time. Forget not, O man, with all of thy seeking, that light is the goal ye shall seek to attain. Search ye ever for light on thy pathway, and ever for thee goal shall endure. Let not thine heart turn ever to darkness. Let Light let thine soul be a sun on the way. Know ye that in eternal brightness ye shall ever find thy soul hidden light. Never fettered by bondage of darkness, ever it shines forth a sun of the light. I... Know thou, hidden in darkness, your soul, a spark of the true flame, exists. Be ye one with the greatest of all lights. Find at the source the end of thy goal. Light is life, for without great light nothing can ever exist. Know ye that in all form matter the heart of light always exists. I, even though bound in the darkness, inherent light always exists. Once I stood in the halls of Amenti and heard the voice of the lords of Amenti saying in tones that were that rang through the silence words of power mighty and potent chanted they the song of the cycles the words that opened the path to beyond I I saw the great path opened and looked for an instant into the beyond saw I the movements of the cycles vast as he as the thought of the source could convey Knew I then that even infinity is moving on to some unthinkable end. Saw I that the cosmos is order and part of a movement that extends to all space. A part of an order of orders constantly moving in a harmony of space. Saw I the wheeling of cycles like vast circles across the sky. Knew I then that all has beginning is growing to meet yet other beings. In a far off grouping of space and time. Knew I then that in words are power to open the planes that are hidden from man. I, that even in words lies the hidden key that will open above and below. Hark ye, now man, this word I leave with thee. Use it and ye shall find power in its sound. Say ye the word Zin Uru. Z I N U R U. Zin U R U. Zin Uru. A and power shall ye find. Yet must ye understand that man is of light and light is of man. List ye, O man, and hear of a mystery. Stranger than all that lies neath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all spaces is filled by worlds within worlds. I, one within the other, yet separate by law. Now I'm going to give you a couple quotes out of the book uh, that are pertinent. Man supports himself only on that which resists. So earth must resist man, else he existeth not. All eyes do not see with the same vision. For to one an object appears of one form and color and to a different eye of another so also the infinite fire changing from color to color is never the same from day to day man is a star bound to a body until in the end he is freed 
through his strife. Only by struggling and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free is his star from the realms of the night. Remember, O man, all that which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has being is passing into yet other being, and thou thyself art not an exception. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exists only in the illusions of the senses. Huh. All through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O oh man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life have I traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O oh man, and be wise. Far neath the earth crust in the halls of Amenti, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being. The seven who are, but are not as they seem. Opened, O man, have I my wisdom. Follow the path and the way I have led. Masters of wisdom, son of the morning, light and of life to the children of men. And the out of the seven, we're going to go to the three. Three holds the key of all hidden magic. Creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth power shrouding with darkness, Binding the souls of the children of men. Sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative to the children of men. That is the third. And it, we're on the third rock, third dimension. And then, pray ye this prayer for attaining of wisdom. Pray for the coming of light to the all. Mighty spirit of light that shines through the cosmos. Draw my flame closer in harmony to thee. Lift up my fire from out of the darkness. Magnet of fire that is one with thee all. Lift up my soul, thou mighty and potent. Child of the light, turn not away. Draw me in power to melt in thy furnace. One with all things and all things with one. Fire of the life strain and one with the brain. With that, this video has been long enough, folks. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Thank you.